The Bama standard to me, it just means excellence. Every day, excellence and greatness is expected out of you. So you just have to go out there and perform and show why you belong here. And like every day, you're pretty much doing a job interview. Welcome back to Bryant Denny Stadium inside the Advantage Center Studios. I'm Roger Hoover, joined by Alabama offensive lineman Tyler Booker, and it's time for the <laughs> Bama Standard, fueled by Gatorade podcast series. As we just saw, the first episode of the Bama Center, uh, Standard, fueled by Gatorade, come out this week. And Tyler Booker, your episode number one. Just first of all, Roll Tide. How's everything going for you in the Crimson yes, Tide sir. this summer? Roll Tide to you as well. Uh, I've, I've had a great summer. I'm just glad to be back home in T-Town. It's June. Everybody's antsy for football. So when uh, Alabama football released, uh, the Bama Senator uh, fueled by Gatorade, uh, what was your uh, expectations kind of going into that episode? And what did you like about fans getting to see your journey? I was very excited about this episode just because, like you said, fans are able to see my journey. They usually see my production on the field and everything that uh, – but they don't get to see everything that goes into it. So they were really able to see how I really take care of myself health-wise as far as eating, recovery, um, and what I do to like kind of take my mind away from the game as well. So I was able, um, I'm glad I was able to have the opportunity to show who I am outside, off the field. Yeah, yeah, that really is good to see because uh, when we've joined, have you in here before uh, talking on Crimson Drive driven by NASCAR? We talked all about your journey to Alabama and uh, the way you got on the field as a freshman, as a sophomore, and then making that decision to stay with the Crimson Tide uh, coming up for your junior season and also take on a leadership role. How important is that for you to share? Why it's important for you to be a leader? Definitely. I feel like I've just been blessed with that leadership quality. I feel like some every everybody has the ability to be a leader, but not everybody is as confident when it comes to leading. And you need a different level of confidence and um, you need to hold yourself to a, a certain standard because as a leader, how am I going to expect something out of you when I don't expect the same thing out of myself? So I just feel like I was blessed with all the intangibles to be a leader. So um, God gives us some missions to do, and that's the mission he gave me, and I, I just love it. Is that especially important when there are a lot of new faces on this team and especially a new coaching staff as well? Oh, of course. So just being a leader on this team, I was able to bridge the gap between the coaching staff and some of the new players to the culture that's already been established here. So I feel like I'm a, a, li a liaison for the culture, for, for the old one, and really bridging the gap between the two. And there's, um, there were a lot of similarities between our culture and the culture of Coach DeBoer's um, old school and the way he ran things. And it's really just based off of winning and togetherness. So. So the series is called the Bama Standard, fueled by Gatorade. Uh, just when you think about the Bama Standard, what does that mean to you? How can you put that into words? The Bama Standard, to me, it just means excellence. Every day, excellence and greatness is expect out of, expected out of you, so you just have to go out there and perform and show why you belong here. Like Every day, you're, you're pretty much doing a job interview every single day, and that's the that's a right kind of peer pressure, I like to say, because if you're not good enough, you're going to be gone. And that's easy to think about when you're thinking about, okay, football practice or maybe a strength conditioning work and then obviously football games. But as you showed in this episode, it goes way beyond that just in the daily maintenance of your body, right? Oh, for sure. So like a, you just mentioned strength and conditioning and football staff, but you also have to be in tune with your nutritionist and the training staff as well to make sure you're putting the right things into your body and also making sure you're taking care of your body after work. So how does the nutritional staff that we saw Rainy Gerald visit with you in the episode, at, how do you stay consistent and kind of locked into her plan that she has for you during the summer? I'm just having a great relationship with Rainy. Rainy's been here since I've been here. So that's something that I really trust and somebody that could talk to about things besides football and just besides nutrition. Like we've really built a great relationship. And that's another thing about Alabama. Like you're going to build a lot of great relationships here. So um, that's, that's a relationship that's helped me so far. And of course, uh, she's in charge of a lot of the menus for when you guys are on campus. But then when you're back at your own home, uh, you have to go to the grocery store. You went to Publix. Uh, it took us along for that as well. Uh, just what have you learned about uh, the right way to grocery stop and make sure you're getting important fuel like Gatorade and be ready to go uh, for everything that's coming up? Oh, of course. Just even when I was at home, I was calling Rainy, asking her what, asking her what I should do. I, I actually did. So I, um, I meal prepped at home. So I asked Rainy what, what proteins I should get, what vegetables should I get and what carbs I should get and then my mom just pretty much cooked it all at once and then I just I didn't even have to think about what I was eating I just went in the refrigerator warmed up what she meal prepped and ate that and that's what led me to lose this weight that I've lost so I think I'm um I'm 330 right now and I played at 355 this past season so this weight loss is definitely gonna help me this season what was kind of that go-to meal um so my mom she would have white jasmine rice she would have steak and bacon wrapped asparagus yeah. 
That's really good. Oh, yeah, that was, <laughs> it, it was really good. It was really good. <laughs> well, that's I mean, not only tasty, but again, it's very functional for what you guys go through, right? Oh, of course, of course. That's and that's what that's what made it a whole lot easier. It, it tasted good. So <laughs> that's really good. And again, that's just kind of a glimpse of the things you guys have to do uh, off the field. Do you try to be a leader to be make sure your teammates are accountable with their nutrition, knowing how to grocery shop the right way, making sure they're getting enough Gatorade, things like that. Yes, I have to be a leader in all facets of life for my teammates. It's not just on the field. And that me being a leader, that starts off the field because how would you feel if I'm like, what are you doing? You're not doing this. You're not doing that. If you don't have a relationship with me off the field, like you're just some guy that so happens to go to the same college as me. Like you're not my brother yet. So I, that starts off the, off the field. So that's me eating with them, like just imparting knowledge into them off the field. So when things do get heated on the field, they know like, okay, he's not just yelling at me to yell at me. Like this is my brother and he wants to see me be great. How important is it, too, just to check in with guys? Maybe over a quick text message, a direct message on social media. Maybe you don't see them as much, you know, every single day during the summer or the spring, but just checking in with guys. It's super important to check in on your guys just because you have to show that you care about them as a person and not just as a football player because if you just only care about them on the field, that's that's what they're going to give you. But, like, that deeper relationship that you build with your teammates, that's when that, that's when that true cohesion as a team comes. That's really exciting to see. And uh, how can a football team really use this time of the year to their advantage to be ready to go in the fall? This time of year for a football team like us, we are using it to really hone in on our technique, but also spend a lot more time together. And like I mentioned um, last time we spoke, I feel like the as the years go by, the closer we get, the better we get. So my freshman year, we were we were okay with togetherness. Last year, we were a whole lot better and we had a lot better results. So having Coach DeBoer, who's all about togetherness, all about family, all about really coming together for one common goal that's with what we want to do is very crucial. So we're doing a lot more things together as a team outside of football because, like I said, that's where those relationships are built. What are some things you guys are doing away from uh, the facility? We're going to be bowling. Uh, We have a community service event coming up. I don't want to spoil it, but just be on the radar for that. (laughs) <laughs> That's certainly really good. Uh, coming up in the series as well, I believe Jahad Campbell will be featured, Deontay Lawson, Malachi Mora. What do those guys mean to you? Those guys mean a lot. I compete against them every day. Well, Jahad, our relationship goes way back. We actually went to high school together. So just knowing him and seeing how much he's grown. But um, D-Law and Malachi, those guys are a little bit older than me. So I've pretty much learned a lot about how to work and how to carry myself as an Alabama football player from them. Have you delivered some tough hits on Jihad and uh, Deontay specifically before? Oh, of course. I try to I, <laughs> I try to hit them harder just because just so whenever they go into a game, they can say, "Man, you don't hit as hard as Book." <laughs> How about Malachi? Any run-ins with him? Malachi is pretty smart. He's a little bit faster than me. I, I haven't been able to hit him yet, but I'll definitely be gunning for him during fall camp. That's certainly <laughs> exciting. Uh, so again, it's a really great time of the year. Are you able to stay patient, you know, waiting on that for fall practice to begin or the first game of the year? Because, again, you realize this is where you can have a lot of games and get better before the season begins. Or do you just want the games right now? Yes, of course I want the games right now, but you just have to take advantage of the time you have. You have to – as um, Coach Dillman from IMG, that's one of my favorite coaches ever, he, he told me one time, he said, be where your feet are. Like right now, today is Wednesday, June 5th. How am I going to win June 5th to help me win these games later on? So that's how you have to look at it. Don't don't put the cart before the horse. That's certainly good. Uh, from the last time we talked, so you got to go back home to New Haven, Connecticut to host your own football camp. Just how meaningful has it been to get back to your hometown and host this event the last few years? Being able to host that youth camp in my hometown is, is very meaningful to me just because other guys who are older than me have held the same events and had a positive impact on me as a person and as a football player. So for example, Tariq Black, he ended up going to Michigan and he, um, I think he's on the Ravens right now, but that's a big brother of mine. We built a strong connection and being from that New Haven area, not a lot of guys make it out and play football at a high level. And I spoke to him yesterday and I just thanked him for being that inspiration for me. So if I can be a Tariq for somebody else, I'm definitely gonna do that. I feel like the best way to do that is through a camp because then I'm able to have 115 little Tyler's in that situation meet their Tariq. <laughs> yeah, I've talked to some uh, football players who have done camps before, and then, then they become coaches later on. They were like, yeah, it was kind of those uh, youth football camps that got the idea in my head. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you like the coaching aspect of it? Oh, yeah, I loved it. My, <laughs> <laughs> I lost my voice about 20 minutes into it, so my, <laughs> my parents had to go get me a megaphone. But, yeah, they, I was, I've was i been around Coach Saban for a while, so the kids walked from one station to another. I was like, nope, send them back, send them back. We're running everywhere. So, yeah, that, it was a great time, and I could definitely see myself having a career in coaching after I'm done playing just because 
I, I love the game of football. And I just want to continue to give back to it. Did you have a straw hat that you were throwing a bunch? or Not a straw hat, but I had a visor. <laughs> There you go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's really cool. Uh, so, again, it's been a great series of the Bama Standard uh, fueled by Gatorade. The first episode's out as we're going to be talking with some of your teammates. They're going to be featured as well coming up in the next few episodes. Just, again, to get our fans excited about what's coming up this fall. What should they look forward to? What are you liking most about this team right now? About this team, I feel like the relationships and the, the togetherness that we're building, I feel like we're having a whole lot of fun during the workouts. And trust me, these workouts are pretty hard. Coach Ballou is finding new stuff to – really push us and get us better but um everybody's doing it with a smile on their face and everybody's pushing each other and everybody's bringing somebody with them what i mean by that if they see somebody lagging behind they're literally bringing somebody with them arm over arm so i'm um, just seeing the togetherness and the bonds that we're building as a team and it's easy to do that within the first week and a half but we have to see how far we can how long we can do it for the rest of these six and a half weeks and i, I, def I think we're definitely more than capable of doing that so I'm just excited to continue to grow with this team. And as far as what you guys can expect, you can expect Alabama football to be played. We love that. Well, we are really excited. <laughs> uh, great series of the Alabama Standard, again, fueled by Gatorade. Uh, Tyler, thank you for being part of it. And we look forward to seeing more from you down the road. Roll Tide. Thank yes, you. sir. Thank you. Roll Tide.